Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Ronald McBerto Will is your host. I am late. I'm late. I'm late. Why am I late? Because I decided to change the program. Today we were supposed to have Daniel Cohen on, but I decided to save Daniel for tomorrow because I wanted to do some more expansive stuff with that. But what I had over the weekend was a dialogue over an email thread with one person. You know, but I found that dialogue so striking that I decided that I wanted to take the whole program up with that dialogue. And I'm going to find a way to put it on the screen as well, because it really, it really behooved me in what it had to say. But beforehand, you know, I got to get to my peeps. Welcome aboard. So let's go ahead and, and, and say hello to everybody. Eric Hayes. Welcome aboard, Nanette Bird-Smith. Welcome aboard, AVQ, also known as Rod Michael Rudnan. Welcome aboard. Let's see if anybody's interspaced between all the information Michael has there. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with that information, primeramente. And what we're going to say, folks, is my great uncle, Vina, 100, recovering from COVID, had a slip and fall two days ago. Foot-long gash on the top of his forehead, came home from the hospital yesterday. I'm going over to visit every day. Kind of worried each time. He's not looking so good. Let's just say I'm a bit distracted right now. Meantime, it's Monday, and I'm about to go way over. You sure have. You sure have. Hey, kudos to your great uncle, Vena, who is 100 years old. More power to him after falling, having COVID. The guy has 20,000 lives, man. Anyhow. Uh, for many who marched, January 6th was only the beginning. For those, uh, and by the way, I'm on shaving today. Couldn't get, I couldn't get time to shave. For those, for these Trump supporters, the next chapter of January 6th is not the ashes of a disgraced insurrection, but a morphous new movement fueled by grievances against vaccines and President Biden and deepening devotions to his predecessor, lies about stolen elections. It, the, it's the year. Since the attack, many have plunged into new fights and new conspiracy theories sown in bloody chaos of the day. And you're going to see the guy that, I'm going to, that I've had this dialogue with, how he really buys into it. He doesn't, but he does. And he, you know, it, it's a, it, that, the way that these guys do things, it's quite interesting. We're going to talk about that. Anyway, uh, they have organized efforts to raise money for the people charged in a capital attack, casting them as political prisoners. Some are speaking at conservative rallies. Others are running up for office. And da di da di da di da. Egberto, there's an image I'd like you to put up on the screen and read out from Max Lerner. Let's see if I can put that on the screen. Uh, I don't think that's a bad... That, that should be on the screen. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put that on the screen. I actually like it. Let's go ahead and put that baby there. I think that's it. Let's see if I got it. Uh, there we go. And the, the screen reads as follows. Uh, let's bring it down a bit. Un poquito nada más. It says, when the history of our era comes to be written, if there are any survivors to write it, its tragedy may lie not in the men of destructive will, whose souls were coil of wild serpents, and who used the arena of history for their mortal embrace, but in the men of good will, who willed the ends they sought and could not will the means to achieve them. The central tragedy of our age, in short, lies not alone in fascism. It lies even more in the liberalism, which has thus far proved feckless to cope with the social collapse and the fascism that follows it. I could not agree more. And that is because of the, the weeniness many times I've spoken about of the progressive wing, the way we deal with things, as opposed to going for the jugular. We always play nice. It's time for us to be strong. It's time for us to be loving, but it's time for us at the same time to be tough as hell, tougher than nails. CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart prepare to distribute free N95 masks next week. Each person will be limited to three free masks, according to the federal officials. Thank you for telling me that I didn't know that. Only three with optimal use. This is going to be good for about half a month. How often can you safely rinse and reuse your KN95 or N95 mask? The CDC recommends that N95 respirators should not be reused more than five times. God, I use my mask quite a bit more than that, but I also try to keep myself well, fairly well protected, I hope. Top donors threaten to cut off funding to cinema. In a letter to the Arizona lawmakers, 70 Democratic donors, some of them 
some of whom gave Cinema 2018 campaign the maximum contribution allowed by law, said they would support a primary challenge to Cinema and demanded that refund their contributions to her 2018 campaign if she didn't change her position opposing to change the Senate filibuster rules in order to pass voting rights legislation. You can put that out. I think we should leave cinema alone. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Let's stop threatening her about cutting off her money. Let's just do it. Let's stop, re because here's what's going to happen. If we make a big stink about getting uh, uh, rid of cinema's money and primary her and all of that and talk about it, it increases her Republican bona fides. And what you'll see eventually happens is that Trump may give the word to the Arizona Republican Party and say, let's take her in as much as she voted to impeach me, in as much as she did this, let's take her to stick it to the Dems. And she may do it because we are leaving her without a place to land. Look, I want her primary. I don't want to talk about primary in her. I just want somebody to primary her. I want her to stop. I want progressives and Democrats to stop giving her money, but I don't want them to announce it. I just want them to stop it. And that way, she'll. it is like killing from within, withering from within, as opposed to having her seem like she's a martyr, a Democratic martyr earning a space in the Republican fiendom. That is what we have to do, in my humble opinion. Cinema recently polled at 8% popularity with a whopping 80% disapproval in the Arizona Democrats poll. Between this and losing her top donor, she's done. One more for the screen. Um, the screen, there's some giblets in the screen. I think I need to use another one. But anyhow, for now, let me just tell you this. It's important. Cinema knew exactly what... Cinema is no fool. Cinema is very smart. Cinema is not running for... Uh, for Senate as a Democrat the next time around. She's either running for president or running as a changed Republican. You know, uh, her good friend is Mitt Romney, somebody that a lot of Democrats like to like. I, you know, you know a lot of Democrats like to think that, that uh, Mr. 47% is okay. And they could live with him because they don't understand the pathology of the ideology of the actual party. Being a part of that party means, well, I don't, I, should I say more? I don't need to. Michael Rodney says activism blizzard employees for the first of its kind Game Workers Alliance Union. The announcement, wait, activism blizzard employees form first of its kind Game Works Alliance Union. The announcement is an industry where unions are rare, came on the heels of Microsoft's acquisition of the company, the creation of unions are always a huge win for workers. Our good friend Yvette Avery Aaron would love to, to, to hear that. Continuing, let's see what we have. Half of the children hospitalized with COVID develop headaches, acute encephalopathy, altered mental state. Seizures were the third most common neurological symptom among children with acute SARS-CoV-2. The idea that the newer COVID variants don't affect children is proven wrong. Lastly, from El Senor Radden, Democracy Online says Jamal Bowman after protest arrest, I will not stand by and I will not stay quiet while the fate of our democracy continues to hang loosely by the thread that the Senate is hell bent on tearing apart. It's not just the Senate, it's also some Democrats. Democrats have to deal with three major crises at the same time without losing sight of any of them. Averting the fall of democracy, handling the pandemic, and forestalling global warming, while the Republicans offer deconstructionist opposition at every turn. Fortunately, we have progressives who will act right on all three, and it's no underestimation that voting rights legislation is absolutely necessary. Look, we're not getting it. We're not getting any real voting rights legislation. So instead, uh, we keep, we keep the, the verbal pressure up on that. But what we have to do is go into Tinbot 2, Pull people, make sure they get registered, make sure those people who don't have IDs get IDs, valid IDs. We have to do the grunt work, folks. That is what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have, we can still beat the suppression. The next time around, we may not be able to beat the voter suppression, but we can still do it this time around in order to keep the House, the Senate, and expand the Senate and expand the House. I know I'm going against everything that the polls are saying, but remember also, 
they need the polls to be negative because progressivist, progressive, the progressive values are taking hold. And they know the only way to get rid of it is for chaos, chaos. That's all. Nanette Bird Smith, hello, welcome aboard. Eric Hay says, isn't it odd now how Biden and Pelosi and Gavin Newsom are now all of a sudden focused on crime? What about summer 2020? Uh, wait a minute. Crime, well, I'm not going to go there. Dangerous felon shoots cops, guess, I'm not going to go there either. Because again, I'm not going to allow you guys to use politics done right to conflate the issues of crime. You want to solve crime? Get rid of the, the, the NRA. You want to solve crime? Put less guns on the streets. You doubt that? Look at other countries around the world. You want to stop crime? Start giving the poor money so they can live. You want to stop crime? Start educating people. In other words, all these progressive policies that we talk about that will prevent the thugs on the streets are the things that Republicans and, and, and conservative Democrats don't want to pass. And then the results of not passing that is crime. But you don't see it. Again, visualizing life through several levels of indirection is what leadership is supposed to be about. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of that. Roberto Luis, saludos mi gente, politics done right. He says, uh, well, welcome, or rather, uh, 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 not a salute. Saludos is like, hello, my good old friends, or my people is what he really wants to say. Eric Hayes said, Berto, there was a march in Washington yesterday. Do you know what for? Of course, the march was a whole bunch of kooks who think that the anti-vax movement is, is of value to society. And I don't use those words in general in my, in my phraseology. I don't call people kooks. But those people that are getting people killed are kooks, including Kennedy, Robert Kennedy Jr., who was one of the leaders out there on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah, they're kooks. Okay, Eric Hakes, anti-vax conspiracy nutters. What about them? Let's see, uh, what else we got? Daniel Lado said, leftism is the cause of the social economic collapse. That's a joke. Melanie Keaton, good evening all, she says. And Michael Lado says, Daniel Lado, you have, Michael Rudnan says, Daniel Lado, you have no evidence for that blanket. I mean, it's a silly statement. We've improved with progressive values, period. I mean, those are items you don't even have to discuss. You just let uh, Brother Lado say something like that. Let it roll off. Tell the truth. And it's over. All right, Eric Hayes, the GOP will loan cinema money that the Democrats Party would have to pay back. No, we won't pay. Why would we have to pay it back? No, let them give her money. Let her run as a Republican in the next election. Daniel Lado says, funding is like Hydra. Cut off one and two rise to replace it. Actually, Daniel, you're right about that. That's why I said we don't need to talk about not paying because the, the, the Republicans would love to donate to her. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, para ver, para ver. If you want to solve crime, elevate the people out of poverty. You, you said exactly what I just said. You're absolutely right, Senor Rodnin. Uh, let's see. Carl Cox is like, Berto, Java is tough. Python is worse. <laughs> Those are two programming languages, man. I programmed neither. I played a little bit with Java and I looked a little bit at Python, but I never did any backend stuff in Python. All right, let's see. So I'm at the end. Okay, what do we want to talk about today? I had a conversation with a friend, with an acquaintance of a friend. And let me see if I can get that to work because it, the way it was doing on the screen earlier, I was seeing a whole lot of mumbo jumping. Let's see. And it looks like that the screen still wants to do that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to load another browser. Let's see which browser am I using. Um, I'm going to try with another browser. So I'm going to lose a couple of messages here as I load up the other browser. I hope I don't drop too many packets. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to bring Let me bring up the chat first. See if I can get the chat going. Uh, is it going to ask me for, oh, it didn't ask me for secondary. So now we're cool on the chat and let's go ahead and bring up, I want to try to bring up my site. A hey, where's my site? Okay. Because this is an important thing that I want to show you guys here. It, it, perfectamente importante. All right. Um, let's see if I can get to that article without doing too many packet loss. All right. Packet loss should slow down in a minute. Let's see. All right. Uh, let's see if she'll go. Let's go ahead and 
Bear with me, folks, because what I want to do is I want to put it on the screen. But before I get it on the screen, I need to tell our system to pick it up on the screen. Exchange. There it is. Let's see. It will work now. Okay. It looks like it's going to not work. <laughs> it's still blinking. I don't know why it's blinking. I'm going to have to figure that one out. If you, if you guys look at the screen, that is what I want to show you on the screen, but it seems to be blinking and I want to get, I don't want to, I don't want to show that blink of our article. So let's see uh, what we do here. Okay. Anyway, I am going to, I'm not going to put it on the screen, but I'll go ahead and read it here. Um, the title of the thing is Exchange with a Racist Who Thinks He Isn't As He Slams the 1619 Project and Foden Rights Bill. So um, the, the exchange, I, I, I had an exchange with this acquaintance. It's not my acquaintance, it's acquaintance of a friend. And, you know, I received an email from an acquaintance of a friend. He started an email conversation showing his displeasure with the Voting Rights Bill. The email thread then evolved into a discussion of the 1619 project and much more. I don't know why. The thread within his thought, it, it, it kind of shows his thought process. But anyway, let me go ahead and tell you what he first said. He said, if the 2020 election was the fairest in history with record turnout, what exactly are voting rights supposed to do? It is nothing to do, it's nothing but a mechanism for election fraud. And you should be careful because once fraud is established as the way the game is played, you might get out frauded. You might get out frauded. You get it? People have to show proof of vaccine, but not identification to vote? Is it? It is so incredibly racist to say black people are too dumb to get IDs. That's what this guy, he, he just outright wrote me that letter. You know, so I guess it's because I talk about these issues, right? So I responded to him and I said, you answered your own question, numero uno. The 2020 election was the fairest in history with record turnout. Numero dos, vote, voting exploded. Numero tres, red states then enact restrictive election rules that bias minorities and poor whites, removing drop boxes, allowing hunting and gun IDs and not student IDs. Voting rights bills set a baseline so that those who would bring back the techniques that prevent some could not vote did not come back to fruition. That prevented some who vote could not, uh, again, could not come back to fruition. It is unempathetic to disregard black people, POCs, that town after town point out their county officials making it difficult for them to get IDs. America is still a very racist country. I live it every day. I have superseded said racism most of the time. Unfortunately, it is a burden white people don't have. It incenses me that people who themselves have prejudices against POCs attempt to make it the figment of the imagination of some. That's what I told him. He replied Im immediately. The 2020 election was fraudulent. It's not valid. America is so, and if America is so terribly or terrible and racist, why do you stay? He says, okay, all right, I get you. I read you. So I replied, this is my country as much as yours as anyone else. And I intend to be a part of making it better. I will not simply seed anything unearned to you. I understand that racism is a necessary cancer for the plutocracy to maintain power. So I hate the plutocracy, but love all the people, including you, my friend. But I will not allow you or anyone else to disregard the evil of our founding, nor will I ever let that evil continue without working with allies to extricate it, as I say on my show, most people are good. Most of those who control us, a large percentage of the wealthy, are psychopaths. They use their wealth to program good Americans into a morass of hate. If I allow their infection to work on me, they win. If I don't, even you will eventually join me and those attempting 
to make a difference from humanity and not capital. That statement says more about you than reality. You are likely one of the few that are immutable. Anathema to a fact-based proof, I am happy that empirically most on the right that I have encountered belief in critical thinking and changing after they see the truth. They generally feel gullible and wonder how did they get down the rabbit hole. One has to be sufficiently humble and have real care to get there. Okay, I'm going to pause right there to see what you guys have to say so far. Uh, let's see. Lee Grant says, I wish Biden was concerned about the U.S.-Mexico border as he is with the Ukrainian-Russian border. Uh, mutually exclusive, but i uh, let you let that stand. Maywood says, Eric Hayes still trying to push the pandemic. Okay, let's see. I want to talk about what I'm talking about here. Daniel says, racism is everywhere. Fallacy will end up doing so much more harm to blacks as it will the white people it is designed to punish. Huh? I don't know what you're talking about, but... Franklin wrote, Massachusetts Constitutional Convention papers to remedy those wrongs, at least in Massachusetts. Michael Rudnan says, May would I point those nutters to the... T- okay, that, that's a different one. Egberto, I'd like to read that exchange. Is there an article? Actually, I have a... It's a blog, and I, I have to clean it up, but I've, I'm reading from the blog that I wrote right now, with that exchange. I got to clean it up some, uh, because I noticed as I was reading... There are some, some grammatical errors. And at first, I was going to leave the grammatical errors in since it was an email exchange. But I decided that I'm going to go ahead and change it after all. Anyway, the acquaintance come back and says, yes, obviously, you are a citizen by choice. Why did you choose to come to an evil nation? Why do you stay in an evil nation? I can't leave. You can. Liberals openly brag about stealing the election through fraud. We do? Where did that come from? Me don't know. I don't know. But anyhow, we'll hold on with that. I replied to him and I said, I chose here, meaning America, because it has its tentacle in every country in this hemisphere. Few understand that the immigration problem and many problems from Central America to South America to the Caribbean is influenced by America. From the Chicago boys, capitalism, to the expansion, modif- the, the expansion modified, or rather the expansion modified manifest destiny, I decided to stay where the capital, that where the where the control existed. Speaking about the evil under which we were founded is not debatable, though it's redeemable. Again, you want to speak about the evil of our founding, it's not debatable. All the things that we have done during and after our founding. It's, it's in the record books, but that doesn't make it not redeemable. It is still redeemable. As I said, I have the right as much as you do or anyone else sends the natives to be here. I intend to be a part to make it a great country for all, not just a few. Be well, he replied. My ancestors were here 100 years before America existed. They weren't evil. And nobody born in a foreign nation has any right to live here. You are trying to destroy the nation that welcomed you. You are trying to destroy the system that made you prosperous. You are so full of hate and jealousy that you are no longer rational or logical. It's a very, it's very sad You must be miserable. This guy's talking about me. I mean, uh, I am, I'm like, I am the one that you're calling mad. I am the one that you're calling. I, you know, it it is, you know, there's this thing that, um, that people of color, especially specifically black people always call about, um, that angry black man or that angry black woman. If we raise our voice or if we, We say a little bit something out of being mellow. You're angry. But he's the one getting angry. He's the one calling me out. He's the one that's telling me how evil or that I need to go home. Not me. I'm being inclusive. So I replied to him. It's a good one. I said, if your ancestors were here just 100 years before it's founded, 
like any non-native American, you were on someone else's ancestral land. That is not debatable. If they took land with violence, they did evil. If they were ceded or bought land that was taken with violence, they were complicit. None of that is debatable. America welcome me? I will leave that for another thread some other time. But again, just like America migrated thoughtful, I mean, throughout the hemisphere, including creating Panama and the canal, which my ancestors built, my migration to America proper is apropos. With all due respect, I do not accept the notion that I do not have the right to be here from anyone whose ancestry is from yet another continent. You have no more right than I do. You can feel like you do, but you don't and never will. Number five, I have no hate for any human. If you knew me and listened to my show, you would know that I have no jealousy of absolutely anyone. Uh, jealousy is an ins insecurity in one's nature. I was lucky to be raised by two parents who ensured none of uh, their kids had that. Six, I can understand that you would think I want to destroy the system. I want a system that serves us all, including you, of one that is, uh, including, in, instead of one that is antiseptic, that antiseptically enslaved. I gave up a very successful software company, you can look it up, for doing full-time political activism because in my success, I actually saw how it was the ability uh, because of economic design to disaffect most. I am not your enemy. Your enemy is a system dependent on us at each other's throats. I will be civil and respectful to you. I will not, however, allow you to believe that the way things are somehow is somehow ordained and divine. At some time, the eyes of most will be opened just like they have been open for some time. Okay? Except, last one, except for the pain from my daughter's second stroke and her fight to get back to normal, I am the happiest I have ever been, even though I am 91% less prosperous doing this work. What I mean is I've lost 90% of my income, okay? Doing this kind of work. But I'm the happiest I have ever, ever been bar none because you finally feel like you're doing something for humanity you finally feel you know uh when we sit back and always ask the question why don't somebody do this why don't somebody do that you look in the mirror and you say well maybe that somebody has got to be me all right i'll, I'll pause here with this response because i see some more commentary on the screen so let's go uh, I know Daniel was going to be a big part of this, but let's let's continue. Um, uh, let's see what we have here. Egberto, I'd like to read the exchange. I'll, I'll, I'll clean the exchange. It's posted already, but I got to clean it up, clean up a lot of grammatical errors in it. Anyhow, Michael Renner said, Egberto, I'm going to read it properly when you post the link. A bit distracted right now, getting a call to go visit the great uncle. Hey, give your great uncle my regards, please, Michael Renner. In fact, give him a big hug for me. Bruce says, the dialogue with my friend is difficult, but may be productive. Thanks for the help. Hey, Bruce, notice I didn't include your name or your friend's name in the dialogue at all because I like to maintain people anonymity, but you're the one who <laughs> spilled the beans. <laughs> all right, Daniel Ledo says, leftist Marxists have polluted the minds of American blacks for decades with a victim mentality. We are seeing the consequences of those lies in deeply divided America where millions of blacks wrongly believe racism surrounds and oppresses them. The fault of that is squarely at the feet of people who share ideology with Egberto Willis. Thank you for saying that because you give me a chance to expand on that. Let's, let's, let's dis dissect Brother Ledo. Leftist Marxists have polluted the minds of black Americans. So first they say black people ain't stupid. Now you're saying black people are stupid. That our minds can be polluted to think that the, the racism that we live with every day ain't real. In other words, when I go into a store and they're following me, it's my imagination. When 
you actually, when my credit is great, my credit rating is great, and I go for a car, and somebody with a credit rating 100 points below me gets a better rate than I do. Oh, it's not racism. It just happens to be. When I go for a bank loan, I'm writing a new, a new book of all the tribulations a black professional man has gone through. Because you see, all my, buddy, all my buddies, especially my white brothers and sisters, they know me. I'm always happy. I'm not, a, you know, I don't, I don't hold a crutch. I don't talk about a lot of these things. And they think everything has always been great. From going, from the time I started working in industry, I've gone through so much because of my hue. And I, you know, I just lived through it and walked through it. But the most difficult thing or the, the, the most infuriating thing is when you have a guy like Ledo come out and he says, we are deeply divided in America because we're letting black people believe that there racism, that there's a racism there that doesn't exist. It doesn't matter that he that he sees people flying the, the Confederate flags and saying these things. And it, none of that matters. Don't believe your eyes. Don't believe your eyes at all. Don't believe that you don't have wealth because those people who could build wealth on their homes, right? Who built wealth on their homes did and you were never able to and now they're being you're being told lift yourself up you can do it just like this other guy well this guy had income that he was able to bring in from you remember when the west was open the west was open and all those people who were moving west they got their land they could they could mark and mark off as much land as they wanted and take it but it was reserved for only one set of people all these things are a part of American history. All these things are exact reason black folk and other POCs are in the conditions that they are in right now. But you don't want people to know that. You want it to look as if it is a genetic thing why they are below economically. When it is a systemic problem that causes it, it's something that can be enumerated, but you don't want anybody learning about it. Because if most, like I preach all the time, most people are good people. They just don't know. And if most Americans knew this, they would say, how could so many, how could a few of my ancestors, because like I spoke to this guy later on, it's a few people that pollute the many. It's that bad apple in that container that infects everything else. And those few, the, the bad founding fathers that we had infected the whole damn nation and the good founding fathers just had to stay whatever. Don't, so when Daniel Lado try to imply like, oh, somehow the liberals are trying to make black folks look, believe that there's racism that isn't there, wake up. It's a silly statement, my brother. Michael Rennes says America is a land of immigrants, has at various points in its history chosen chosen to choose their doors to certain peoples. And it's almost always people of color. I don't know when it wasn't people of color. Bruce Pollard says, we had a nice chat about what evil means. All right, let's see. Um, Daniel Lido says, liar, you want to replace the system. You have to destroy the, own, the one currently in place. You want to replace the culture. We have seen how you do this by destroying the traditional culture. Just be honest. What is culture? What is traditional culture? I tell you what, let me continue reading. Let me first go through real. Let me continue reading because I think it is funny how you say we want to destroy culture as if America's culture is your culture, right? You don't mean destroy American culture. What you really mean is you want to have only your culture be the culture of the land. The rest of the conversation, I think, is instructive. Let's continue. Uh, the, my acquaintance said, my biological father was an American Indian living on reservations. Mother's side goes back to 1600. Daughters of the revolution, revolution and all that. I was given away for adoption because nice white girls don't, ma don't mate with Indians. My adopted family returned me when they divorced when I, was, when, when I was 10. Me and my white privilege and my Indian ancestors were killing each other mercilessly. The Sioux were coming down to the plains at the same time whites were. The entire nation that taken land by force in 1600 was evil is frankly point pants on the head retarded. 
people have battled over land time after time. I, I'm not doubting that at all. I am just saying you came, you stole land that belonged to somebody else. And yet people do that all the time. But don't try to make it magnanimous. You are a perfect example of how communist propaganda, like 1619 Project, uh, uh, BLM, gay rights, and everything else exists only to convince people that America is evil and they will destroy it. How did you turn BLM, gay rights? I mean, you lost me there, but it's okay. You bite the hand that feeds you. Curious what you think your job in the commune will be. The acquaintance of my friend then felt compelled to address the 1619 Project. He said, this is shameful, isn't it? Amazing how, an openly, uh, how we openly teach children lies. It's designed to make them hate America. So like you, they will want to destroy it. Let me tell you something that kind of behooved me with this guy. In another conversation, this guy told me he was not a right winger. He was not a Republican. He was, he, that's what he tried to tell me, right, in a, in a private email. He wanted to try to tell me that he wasn't, he wasn't following his ideology, but he is, he is falling down exactly the talking points that you get on Fox News. The thing that we got extricate, the indoctrinator, we got extricate. So I replied, I find it amusing that you think the telling of our story, America's story, our history, which the 19 Project or Zinn's book makes you hate America. I think those who promote that notion are attempting to instill fear into Americans. It is amazing. I find that telling our history and how much we have overcome speaks to our current and potential strengths to change to be better. No race, hell no. There is no race, no ethnicity, has a monopoly on violence or evil, when, uh, whether black, brown, white, or white in hue. But we are recounting American history here. We count, we could do Brazilian history and others and apply the same critical analysis. Let me shock you. I hold the Africans who sold slaves to the Westerners in the same contempt as the slave owners. They are all evil. You see, there are the small amount of people that leads, that leads evil. Many of the executives of our corporations are the abstraction of evil for the shareholder, the system. In other words, the shareholder don't want you to know, don't care how it gets the money. He doesn't care that people are getting slaughtered because he's abstracted for it. The executives are abstracted from what their employees are doing to kill, to maim, but commanded by them. And the shareholders don't even know that. The shareholders are even a step aside. Abstracted evil, the shareholder. Okay? Look, man, try to listen to my words through an unbiased lens. I'm not attacking you. I have nothing against you. We are all product of the system, but it is on us to see the truth, the puppeteers, and then mitigate it. You should also read the 1619 Project. My daughter is in a Twitter space book club and I'm learning so much which corroborated untaught history. Again, we do not need to defend the evils. Whoops, I need to, whoa, whoa, whoa. there we go. We do not need, where did I, I miss my point. Bear with me a second. Uh, yeah, we do not need, donde estoy, donde estoy. You should also read the 1619 Project. My daughter is in Twitter space book club. And I'm learning so much with uh, so much with corroborated untaught history. Again, we do not need to defend the evils of a small number of our forefathers. It is their doing, not ours. But we sure as hell should not continue to hurt others to protect their legacy. The acquaintance writes back. Find it amusing that you think the telling of our story, our history, which the 1619 Project Zen's book makes you hate America. Huh? What? Then he says, and you hate America, openly hate it. You think it was evil. It's evil and has to be changed. How can you love evil? Why do you want to change that which you love? Very little in 1619, this is it's true. Of course, that's not a true statement. Uh, it is just propaganda. It's based on 
bald faced lies. Nothing is written by anyone with knowledge of history or economics. It has never been defended by any historians. Of course, we know who wrote the history, right? So when we get, when we get history from the other people who lived it, it's not real. But the master who wanted to make the history sweeter than it was, oh, you, you're ready to listen to that, right? All right, I said to him, I replied, read my words in the context written. You are wedded to the idea that I hate America because it allows you to hate me. Try thinking that just like one has a friend and relative with flaws, you don't know, you don't throw them away, you work with them. The plutocracy wants to take our humanity away. They need you to hate me. They need you to think that I want to inflict harm on you or America to justify that hate. If we can concentrate on hating each other, then con they continue to rob both of us blind. That is the entire reason I do what I do, to stop it. Again, assume for once that I'm not the enemy, sir. What specifically is not true about the 1619 Project? Well, uh, he then sent me a few links. I read the links. They really was just unobjective links. But he wrote the following. He said, I don't hate you. I don't know you to hate you. I don't even hate my ex-wife. The biggest irony is that what you accuse me of is what you let them do to you with the 1619 Project and BLM. I am a civic nationalist. That's, you know, he doesn't want to call himself a right-wing racist. I'm a civic nationalist is what he called himself. You know, a civic, that, that's a, look, you know what that is. I don't care about color. I care about culture. I am very against multiculturalism. If you want to convert America into something it isn't and has never been, and you think my ancestors were evil, then politically you are the enemy. You are trying to subvert democracy and free market principles. All that work woke crap. All the BLM and 1619 and everything else has one goal, the destruction of America as we know it. You yourself want to destroy capitalism and think we are evil. Again, how can you love what you say is evil? You can't. You hate the nation that offered you sanctuary and where you prospered. You hate the medical system saving your daughter. It's very strange. As far as history goes, I don't subscribe to the great man theory. I am a people's history guy. Germany created Hitler. Hitler did not create Germany. America created Trump. Trump didn't create it. I, be, I agree with you there though. That last paragraph, I agree with you. He was created. So I reply. And I, this is where I'm going to, this is my last thing to him because at this point, I don't do the circular thing. I get the points out and then open it for everybody because I know people in general will see through the minutia. So this is what I told him. I said, the carnage, let me, let me get it from the start. I want to make sure I get it from the start. I've read those articles that you suggested and it is the pushback I would expect there is so much of our history that is myth and told by those who would sanitize it. But reality is tough. I like the way this Forbes article read, and I gave an objective Forbes article for him to read. Nothing special in the article. But then I continued. The carnage and hate that POC and POCs endured and though not as bad, continue to endure, that alone should give credence to much in the book. I participate in the debates on the book. It gets healthy, and some think at times Hannah Jones was too matter-of-fact. Anyhow, or in, our initial sin was very violent, instigated by a few, but perpetrated by many. When one uh, to tell uh, someone like me that is not the case, it concerns me. When one tells me that's not the case, it concerns me. As I said, even though I smile and love, I have lived it. Like I said, you choose to be immutable as we speak past each other. You are wedded in an ideology that hurts, 
America has always been multicultural. Africans, Chinese, Europeans, etc. built this country. If we did have them, if we did not have them, America would be different. As such, America is inherently multicultural and no one should allow forced dominant culture to prevail, period. You know, I, earlier Daniel Ledo says, you want to change our culture. What, what culture am I trying to change? America doesn't have one culture. America has some founders that brought in a whole bunch of other people uh, and, and other people brought in a whole lot of people that formed this country. And all those cultures make this country since its beginning. It's not like, okay, we got a, a good American culture and then we had all these foreigners coming in to change it. America was built with foreigners because even the original people who wrote the Declaration of Independence were damn foreigners. So let's get it right. Get it right and stop believing, stop having limited thought processes. Now, I enjoyed our discourse. While you chose not to go down my logic tree, I am sure that seed is in your brain and maybe at some time, when you open yourself up, it may grow or maybe not. But like I said, you and people like you, the immutable, thankfully, are a small, even, if even vocal minority. As such, you will die out. And thankfully, for the next generations, we will have that society, MLK, and other good people have spoken about a social democracy where your worth is what you decide to bring to the table. You have a wonderful rest of your day. I am done with this thread. And, you know, he sent me a couple of emails after that, but like I said, I was done with the thread. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bruce says, we had a nice chat about what evils means. And uh, let's see, Professor Carl Anderson, White Rage, is, uh, my daughter just posted that and said, woo. Uh, let's see, uh, Daniel says, liar, you want to replace the system. I want to make the system better. That's what I want to do. Emma Becker says, every single person in America, except for the Native Americans and Eskimos, come from immigrants, Americans, forget where they came from, but they are quick to condemn immigrants to this country. Emma, you're a genius, my dear, beautiful lady. Uh, let's see who else we have here. Uh, para ver, Emma says, thank you for what you said. I agree with you completely. No one has the right to hate on others. You had wonderful speaking points and I'm glad you didn't just let it slide. No, I, you know, I wanted to, I, I wanted to engage. I needed to engage. And that's what we do. And I don't even mind when people just cuss me or call me names. I've been called so many damn epithets, it ain't funny. It doesn't bother me because it's, it's what I've resigned myself to do. Okay, Eric says, and my brother Eric, my right-wing brother Eric, nice guy. Conser oh, you don't like right-wing, you like conservative. Brother says, Egberto, you're a happy, good-natured person for sure. Thank you, brother. All right, Michael Renner says, in 2017, nearly one in 10 polled had open white supremacist views. Has that gotten better or worse since Trump? I don't know. Actually, Trump, what I think Trump did is he awakened those who had that in them. And I think it's good. Because it gives them a chance to purge it. Like I said, I am not going to be the one that look at my white brothers and sisters, including my racist white brothers and sisters, ones that are racist, and just say, oh, you are irredeemable. Or if, if that were the case, I wouldn't speak to the brother I spoke to for that long of a, that, that email exchange. It took a lot of time yesterday, but I wanted to engage him because I learned from him. I learned the thought process that gets you down that rabbit hole. And that's why I also engage to learn, right? If you're engaging, you're learning. If you're talking to somebody and you're not learning from them, you know, uh, you, then you have a conceit problem or something. But I make sure I learn from absolutely everybody I talk to, even if it's a toddler. All right, let's see. Melanie Keatham says, Marxism and I send our regards. <laughs> My grandma said, Berto, what, when it wasn't people of color, Eastern Europeans, Irish and Jews. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I remember the Irish stuff. Ashley says, what is white culture? What is American culture? Yelling that POC is playing victim. It's weird flex. Yeah, it is. It, that is true, Ash. Eric says, all entitled, to our, all entitled to our opinions too and should not be shut down. I agree with that. Okay. Uh, 
Ash is like, whoa, all this discourse and name calling and yelling from the right smells like fear. It is fear, boo. It is fear. And that's why I don't look at it as evil pers- on the average American citizen. On the plutocracy that's pushing it, I'm in their skin. Tom C. says, just because you want to make our country better doesn't mean you want to destroy it. Thank you very much, brother. Multiculturalism is America's strength and democracy is our means of making it better. And, you know, it's, it, there was never a time that America was not multicultural. And that is what these folks don't get. Carl Cox says, amen to Tom. Tom always has a lot of smart stuff to say. AVQ says, Tom C., understand that when you are trying to make your country better, that means you recognize the flaws. Amen, brother. Maywood was replying. AVQ says, much agreed. I want to get to, and we're coming close to the end. And let's see. Ashley has some more links in there for folks to read. Tom C. says, learning about America's true history with all its flaws and strengths is how we make an enlightened intervention and change the future of our nation to make it better. Absolutely. Ashley says, sources are at the bottom of the link. Thank you, beautiful. Uh, Roberto Lewis says, I couldn't have said it any better. Roberto, you are on point. Thank you, my brother. Bullet points from Ashley. Uh, Michael Rudnan says, bullet points from Ashley's link. People with four right beliefs are characterized by simplifying mindset and tendency to search for order and structure. They have a long, strong desire for group-based dominance and hierarchy and often see social groups in a uh, range along superiority, inferiority dimensions. Eric Hayes like, Berto, everything is purgeable. <laughs> okay, hermano, okay. All right, George Ruddock says, that's right. The right are frightened they should be when they look at the polls. Oh, well. Brother Ruddock, I haven't heard from you in a long time. You have, you have abandoned us with your excellent commentary over the years. All right, folks, um, I forgot to do my ask today. So what I'm going to do real quickly is, do I have play my, my, my ad for my book? Here we go. I'm Egberto Willis, as host of Politics Done Right, a progressive radio media show on Pacifica Network's KPFT 90.1 FM Houston that engages all ideologies. I found that our political angst isn't mostly ideological. There is a well-designed effort by many in power to control us. If we are at each other's throats, we are less likely to demand our economic and local wishes. In that light, I wrote three books. I wrote the first one titled, As I See It, Class Warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom to describe the entire economy in a manner we can all understand. It highlights why it was designed to pill for most as it empowers a few, the chosen. The second book, titled, It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors, Take It to the Next Level. After understanding how the system pilfers, it is incumbent that we can speak to our peers to empower a change. The third book, How to Make America Utopia, Take Away the Economy from Those Who Rigged It, gives us a place to land. After learning about our economy that is dysfunctional for most and learning how to engage the other side, we point out what would make an economy that works for all. Each book stands on its own, but together they provide the full picture. Please consider getting one or more. You will undoubtedly learn, be entertained, and help us continue the mission with our blogs, articles, blogs, articles, and everything else. And folks, please go ahead, and if you are on YouTube, click that join button, become a part of our PDR Posse. Likewise, go ahead and visit us if you if you are in some other network. Go to politicsandright.com slash YouTube. Bye, Senor Rodney. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. I uh, go to politics and, and tell your, your uncle I say hi and power to him, get better. Uh, go ahead, folks, and go to politicsandright.com slash YouTube to become a part of our YouTube channel. And uh, please consider going to politicsdoneright.com slash, let me see what's it, dot patron to become one of our patrons, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. For those on podcasts, politicsdoneright.com slash patron, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Or go to politicsdoneright.com slash PayPal, P-A-Y, well, everybody knows how to say PayPal. PayPal, whoops, right there, PayPal, politicsandright.com slash PayPal to give us either a one-time support or monthly, however you choose. The all, you can buy our memorabilia, all our good stuff, our, our, our t-shirts, hoodies, all of that at politicsandright.com slash store. And of course, the catch all, catch all for how are the different ways that you can support Politics and Right. Go to politicsandright.com slash support. Look, folks, you could be anywhere, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. I genuinely, genuinely appreciate that because it means that we can all learn together. We can all start our posse. And, and one of the other things, just please don't come here and listen, but please 
if you think I'm wrong, like Lego thinks I'm wrong and he puts the stuff out and gives me a chance to answer it back, speak up. If you don't like what I say, speak up. Still love you, man. Speak up. Speak up. Tiana Will Wilson, where have you been? We missed you. Tiana Wilson. But speak up, folks. If you don't agree, you don't have to agree with me. We can have a debate. We can talk about it. You know? But also, I want you guys to share the blogs that we write. Share the books that we write. Share the videos that we produce every day. A lot of videos every day. It takes 16 hour days, but guys. So please do that. Because the only way we are going to change this system is if everybody gets enlightened and they're not indoctrinated like those on the right and some on the left. Don't think that the left doesn't have its indoctrinative areas as well. They do. So, my name is Egberto Willis. You know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.